Celebrating life, drinking in the varied culture and making the most of what's around us. That's what Colours of India is all about. Welcome. Let's take a quick look at the main stories this week. The India Art Fair is back. A Bharatnatyam performance and a colourful play at the NSD Fest. The grandest and the most awaited art event was declared open in Delhi last week. The India Art Fair, which was until last year the India Art Summit, had over 1,000 artists participating in the fair. edition of the India Art Fair got bigger and better with the most diverse contingent of galleries participating from across the globe. The country's largest art event featured works from 20 countries brought here by 98 galleries of which 43 are based outside India. There hasn't been this level of a showcase of art in India, historically speaking. We've got some of the top dealers in the world here, Hauser, White Cube, Continua, several others, and it's really, it's really putting India on the world art map. The art fair saw greater emphasis on 3D art and other experimental forms of work, apart from the colour paintings adorning the walls. India has always had a very strong history of showing progressives and moderns a very 2D format of work which is um, you know, highly collectible, very easy to put up on your wall. But this trend is changing. So you see this you know, avid mix of galleries where you have about 50-50% and you also have a, you see a very strong presence of um, international galleries this year where you see people wanting to collect international works. So while Wim Delvoy from Belgium exhibited his dump truck made of laser-cut stainless steel, our very own Indian artists like Subodh Gupta chose 3D art installations. New Age artist Shine Chavain drew examples from everyday life to put together his work of art. Installation and this piece of uh, this piece is made of uh, deer, deer, uh, deer sheets, deer faces. And uh, dear, dear faces, and uh, I was inspired from uh, deers and their the hab habitual space and habitat. The exhibition together, which you see on the stand, um, you know, they, there's certainly a continuity to the uh, to the artists. You know, the Subod and Bharti, as our Indian artists, um, certainly fit very uh, closely to the gallery program. The art fair is set to facilitate international exchange and trade and contribute to the growth of a vibrant art scene in India. It was a grand festival where artists, curators and collectors could meet, trade and talk about their art. At the same time, the festival was also welcoming of those others who were there just to learn about world art. Moving on to some soul-stirring music, we have for you an evening of good opera. Excelsia Kanwile began with Schubert's number called Who is Sylvia? a sorrowful yet soulful piece and Akiko Modit excellently supported the singer on the piano.
Excelicia then went on to sing a brighter aria called Tristi in French, composed by Foyer. This was about people rejoicing in the month of April, blooming flowers and the coexistence of untold pain of loss and suffering. This was followed by Sound of Music, a cheerful number. The main theme is of course based on Western classical music but as that covers a big ground of, of uh, all sorts of music from the very centuries, we are um, concentrating on the Romantic period and on the Baroque period. The two also performed in operas based on Roman Catholic Mass. These were sung for the repose of souls that have passed away. Indeed an experience to hear music across various languages and moods, from the slow to the wild, from the buoyant to the soul stirring. India is definitely opening up to arts and music which was once considered western, as can be seen by this reception that these artists got. Well, it's here that we take a quick break, but only to be back with many more fascinating stories very soon. Welcome back. Dancer Sulakshana Jairaman enthralled the audience with her beautiful Bharatanatyam performance at the Azad Bhavan. And we bring you visuals from there. Sulakshana Jairam began with the traditional Shiv Vandana, which means offering prayers to Lord Shiva. She twirled beautifully to Bhor Shambho, setting the pace for the evening. So Lakshana's selections were among her personal favorites. In the, in the beginning, I start with uh, a composition of Swami Dayanand Saraswati, uh, Bho Shambho. And it's, uh, it's a very, very popular item, down south. Um, so it's got a very distinct flavor to it. Um, this will be followed by a composition of my guru, late Sri Pandanalu Srinivas uh, It's a very, very beautiful Varnam. Uh, and I've worked on this specially for this season. Vandana was followed by the Varnam. The heroine in this piece is deeply in love with Lord Brahadeshwar. She confides to her friend about how she is lost in his thoughts all day and so finds it difficult to concentrate on any other activity. Yes, I liked it and the, the way how she was performing it and the colors, how she was dressed. There was a lot of feeling in the colors and how she came. 
I found it very nice and pleasant. The most sensual piece, however, was stored for the last. Performed in Ragam Sahana, Sulakshana depicted how a young heroine is deeply in love with Lord Krishna. <laughs> But her marriage to someone else compels her to bid Krishna farewell. She pleads Krishna to never forget her devotion and undying love for him, no matter where she may be. I was very impressed by this performance. Uh, coming from Europe, this is very uh, new to me, this kind of dance, but uh, it's very impressive. Uh, you could hear after the performance how tired she was, but she looked so controlled and so uh, uh, such a good performance. So I was uh, extremely impressed by it. It's very, very, she's doing very good job. Sulakshana cut across all age groups by bringing the sensitivity of each of these emotions charmingly through her adept dance moves. <laughs> Dance has a language of its own which can cut across barriers of age and language. Now, a witty novel about the sad state of Pakistan. This was one intellectual gathering. Pakistani author Mohammad Hanif was in conversation with Barkhadat at the launch of his novel, our Lady of Alice Bhatti in Delhi. So I had this like very clear uh, memory of, uh, of this nurse walking into my mother's room. I was in the hospital for, for a couple of months. Uh, and she looked, you know, sort of uh, very tired, but very beautiful. And whatever she was doing was very professional. And nobody was kind of, you know, uh, <laughs> nobody was overseeing her. It was like four, four in anyway. So that image had stayed with me. A sparkling and a witty tale, this novel reflects the state of Pakistan and Hanif manages several swipes against religious belief of all stripes. Barkadat quizzed him on his provocative statements made in the book through the eyes of a Christian named Alice Bhatti. Is there an element that when you, in a sense, poke fun, poke fun at a lot of this because it seems ridiculous to you? Mm -hmm. You don't think ever that it was... I, I, don't, really, I, don't, really think it. I don't really think it's ridiculous. My point was that this steady, this guy is not religious. Uh, he doesn't kind of practice of it. Uh, but, and he doesn't even remember where he has read, read it, it, where he has read it, or yeah. who has who told him. Yeah. So these are kind of, you know, little things that people kind of keep, kind of, uh, the things that keep accumulating in, in, in people's minds. It was very witty, uh, very healthy, and in a way, uh, extremely telling uh, without opening up about what's the undercurrents of what's happening in Pakistan and also the fact that he talked about the two you know Punjabs and their mingling and the and also a very important message he gave at the end was that the future is to open the doors and he kept on saying that he was not into you know uh, politics or into reality or what's going on but the, he was very subtle and that's what I enjoyed the most and then it was finally time to sign the novel there are no flowery languages or stereotypes in this book instead it is the world as he sees it expressed through the eyes of his characters 
Well, it is here that we take a second break, but Colors of India will be right back. Welcome back. The Bharat Rang Mahotsav by National School of Drama had many theatrical productions here in Delhi. One of the critically acclaimed plays was in Kannada and it was scripted by H.S. Shiva Prakash. This was a play within a play, showcasing how a theatre group begins to rehearse a play centering on the sacrifice of a Jain saint, Bahubali. But the owner eventually ends up losing the telecast rights of the play. How this affects the proposed production is depicted in this theatre. Bahubali is celebrated in Jaina mythology as a symbol of sacrifice of everything in royalty. So the play centers around this tragedy and the play uses many levels of narration, uh, cinematic narration, poetic narration and uh, media narration and uh, it's a contrast between what's going on, the performance of the show itself and a group of actors were trying to uh, put up a performance based on the original story of Bhagavadi and how the two levels interact with each other. The play was performed on several planes. Direct narration, audiovisuals, enactments of history and prose and poetry flooded the enactment. The play was based on comedy, absurdity and irony. It showed how present-day forms of communication, though shaped by earlier ones, are now altering them in a period of violent change and displacement. The use of various theatrical tools like play within a play, direct narration, history, mythology, all this gave a visual treat to the viewers. Moving on, we have for you Adi Anand. Hindustani classical music has reinvented itself during the years and this was presented in a Jugal Bandi. Change is the only constant, they say. An experiment, a musical evolution. When it is a jugalbandi between well-known Hindustani classical singers Ashwini Bhide Deshpande and Sanjeev Abhyankar, the experiment reaches rarely perfected levels of harmonious symphony. This was Adi Anand, NCPA's maiden music fest in Delhi. The concept of Adi Anand springs from something that we wanted to curate as in traditional but yet reaching out to the new creative aspects within the tradition so that we are able to foster not only the tradition but we are for able to foster the changes that come along with the tradition because we firmly believe that no tradition can just remain static. With a slow yet steady build up, Ashwini maintained Rag Natabharav and Sanjeev Rag Madhumanti, beautifully weaving a Jugalbandi together. This was based on Murchana, which means an effort to maintain the tonal quality of each singer while singing together as a duet. Oh, 
For the first time, the uh, uh, concept of a male and female singing together um, in their own natural skills, yet maintaining uh, the raga structure is what is unique. Because um, if we have to sing a Jugal Bandi, if I have to sing a Jugal Bandi with Sanjeevji, then either I have to sing in his pitch, which is half a scale higher than mine, or he has to sing in my scale, which is half a scale, half a uh, um, uh, half an octave lower than his. So there is a compromise. But in this type of Jugalbandi, which is called as Dasrangi Jugalbandi, why? Because it was first thought by Pandit uh, Jasraji, Sanjeevji Guruji, that is why. So in this, we, we sing in our natural scales and we employ a principle which is called as Shadaj Madhyam Samvad. I sing from my scale, my scale Madhyam, my Madhyam becomes his shadaj. The Jugal Bandi appeared to be an experiment where one expert perfectly complements the other, despite variations in voice and intonation. This was music that emerges from the traditional and yet keeps evolving with time. And what came about was a flawless blend of ecstatic melody and heady classical music. Whenever a lady and a gents perform together, they have a different scale, natural scale. A lady's scale is lower than a gents scale and a gents scale is half octave above. So for example, Sa is a lady's scale. Masa is a gent scale. So what can be done not to lose the tonal quality of both the musicians? Otherwise, if we compromise on the basic note, then the tonal quality loses. Both of us change our scales and then the natural tonal quality loses. So he was searching what can be done to maintain the tonal quality. And then this concept of this Jasrangi. <laughs> Contrary to the first half, the second half saw the tempo build high with Kahe Manikaro, yet another Jugal Bandi between the two maestros. What was especially worth noticing was the seamless voice modulation between the two. The Jugal Bandis were interspersed with solo songs from time to time by the talents so as to give a musical break to the audience. Starts building up and now at the time I think it's really picked up. So in the initial times you were really, uh, you know, the mood is getting on and from a layman's perspective I think it's really, you know, rekindles your inside and gives you a little soothing feeling. The audience did sense the passion and commitment put together in preserving and nurturing classical Hindustani music. This music was truly Adyanand or eternal. tones and styles and the beautiful coming together of these elements. That's what made Adi Anand a great success. Now that's all we have for you on this week's episode of Colours of India. You can of course send in your suggestions and feedbacks onto our Facebook page. And until next week, keep smiling.